everybody. It's uh, Jason Levine out here at Prototype Con, and we're here with um, Robert Burke from Robert Burke Games, great designer, and uh, thank you, <laughs> jokester as well. I'm not a jokester. <laughs> never, You're a never. jokester. <laughs> <laughs> we've had some fun times joking around <laughs> when we've gone out before. Um, so let's talk about some of your games. You did. Sure. Um, your one that you're most well known for is Cartoon, which is more of a, a children's style game, which I really like. I gave a copy to my niece and nephews, and oh, they good. love it. They love building the little monsters. How did that come about? Oh, that was my very first game. It kind of got me back into the hobby. It was just an idea that came from artwork that I had been doing for years and years and years, just making these wacky cartoon creatures. Uh, and I kind of got this vocabulary of different lines, different body parts, like different noses. And so when I did a cartoon creature, I wouldn't really think about what I was doing. I would just put them all together. So it was always something different. So I got the idea to put those body, different body parts on tiles and let players create their own cartoon creatures. So that's what the, the idea came from that. And that's kind of got me going designing that game. And that's when I rediscovered the hobby is based on that game cartoon that I did. And I actually uh, start play tested it right here where Prototype Con is happening at the first Dice Tower Con that was here. Really? Oh, yeah. And that's that. where I first met Tom Vassell and I first met Stephen Avery and Richard Lanius and Oh uh, really? Yeah, so I really kinda got into the hobby right here at this uh, at where this convention's happening. See that's why, you know, Come to Dice Tower Con, you'll have a good time, and you can see it makes people's careers too. <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. And and that's been cartoon has been great. I mean, like I know just watching my niece and nephew play it and move the pieces around is and make the monsters. They love making different monsters, purple heads and everything, and they just love it. And yep. When you did, were you thinking I'm going to make a kids game first, or were you just thinking I'm? Gonna yeah, make I, I was thinking I wanted to, I, I wanted to make a family game. I wanted to make a a, a game that kids as young as three years old could play. So Cartoona, like a, a young child that's even three or four, can use them as like even a puzzle and put together different creatures. And when I first made the tiles, before I even had rules, I would let really young kids play it, and they would like play it for an hour, two hours. And mothers were like, oh my goodness, you know, this is great. My kid is like focused for an hour doing this, you know? And then I started putting more complex rule sets on top of it. So it really kind of scales. Yeah. As the kid grows up, you can introduce more rules. And the, the, uh, the full game has a, a big take that element. Um, which some people love and some people don't, but it really can kind of grow with the kid, was the idea. Exactly. No, it's great. If, if you have children, it's a great game for anyone out there who has children to look into. Um, Draco Magi, another game you did more recently. And that's connected to Dice Tower, too, because I met you know Richard Lanius here at the first Dice Tower Con, and the next Dice Tower Con, we kind of were, you know, I showed him a card game, a uh, dragon card game that I had, and that was more an abstract kind of strategy game. Mm -hmm. And of course, Richard has great ideas, so he was like, oh, we, you should do this and this and this. I'm like, Richard, just design it with me. And he said, yeah, okay, let's do it. So we kind of designed that game together, and that started at Dice Tower uh, Con as well. And we worked on that for a good year and a half, long distance, and got together when we could to play test it ourselves, and our different groups we're able to play test it separately um, so that was and we've, I've got an expansion for that coming out uh, this year as well oh you do with yeah great Fox games mm -hmm. oh great I mean I, I love the concept of it how you're, you're kind of putting dragon against dragon and you're comparing them and you're kind of trying to attack each other I love the concept of the game. oh thank you and the, the expansion is really going to change it dramatically because uh, it's, there's really the drafting at the beginning is going to be very important so mm -hmm. players are going to you could do a blind draft or an open draft, but they're going to draft their dragon decks. So there's going to be different styles of play players can do depending on what dragons they add to their, their whole dragon deck. So that drafting phase is going to be a, a new kind of key part of the game that I think really kind of takes it to a, another level. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's a, it's a very good game as well. Now, one of the games that I really like, well, not just because I have a promo card in it, <laughs> which I do, but um, Operation Faust, it's kind of on a coup kind of game, but it adds the whole Monument Men theme where you're collecting the different artwork and some artwork is more valuable than others. Right. Um, had had you played Coup before then said I'm going to make a different kind of game based on it? I had played Coup before and um, other bluffing games that I'm huge fans of as well, inspired it as well, like Skull, I'm a huge fan of that mm -hmm. game. Cockroach Poker I'm a big fan of. 
Um, but all those games had something I didn't like was the player elimination. So, uh-huh. and and they were really kind of light games. So my idea really was well, first the theme. My father-in-law got me into that theme, and I was very excited about doing a game around that theme to begin with. Uh, but then when I was loving these bluffing games, I'm like, you know, I want to create a game that has no player elimination, where you can bluff the same way and put a little more meat into it. You know, not make it real heavy, but a mid-weight game, not such a light game. So that was really my design goals uh, when I started uh, developing that one. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I like the concept of your collecting points, and, of course, it's got the same bluffing aspect of crew where you have different characters, but you added a bunch of things in where you could have more than two characters, so you could have a bunch of character cards in your hand, and right. up to four, and you could do mm-hmm. different things with it, like, oh, I've got... Four French resistance, give me eight dollars. Right, or, and you can lie about that too. So yeah, that makes it interesting. Yeah, it's a very, very good concept. And uh, like I said, there's a promo card. There with is me. with your face on. <laughs> and when they took your picture, I think you had to lay on the floor or something. Yeah, what happened was um, we. Uh, originally, I took a picture, and I and you sent it back. You said, make it, it look no World War II-ish Yeah, I was looking. like, we don't want the pajamas and the Mickey Mouse ears. That can't be, it's a World War II themed game. I like the pajamas and Mickey Mouse ears. No, so I said, well, what would be more World War II looking than being like you're in the trenches or something? So um, at the game store at The Rock that we game at, there's outside, I don't know why, but there's this like wooden deck thing. And it's because there's like... A, there used to be this restaurant called The Ranch or something. So there's wooden decks. So I said, Tom, I'll lie down on the floor. You take a picture of me. And I'll wear like this green shirt, like a green army color shirt. And I lie down on the floor. And he took a picture. And it actually looks like I'm standing behind a wall that's made of wood. And I'm actually lying on, yeah. on like this wooden deck. Yeah, you can't tell he's lying on the floor, but he is. And you can't see right now, but Sam Healy's behind the camera. And he's in the game, too. He's the French resistance leader, I think. Yeah, Sam has a card. Um, yeah. Who else has a card in, in the promo pack? A bunch uh, uh, yeah, Dan King of Game Boy Geek fame is is in there. Ryan Metzler is in there. A bunch of you guys, Dice Tower guys. Z2, right? Z is in there. Yep. So, yeah. Uh, the Even though Fox- Z hates the game, he's in, he's in the game. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Z... He didn't get it. <laughs> um, the promo packs, though, they're only print on demand now. So they're print on demand through Game Crafter if you want those. So if you want them, if you have Operation Faust, then you could find the promo packs print on demand as well. And, yep. And get yourself a copy of those because they're cool. They add like little a secret role. Everybody has that exactly. special power that you have that nobody knows what it is until you flip it and use it. Yeah. So it makes it kind of variable powers, and it yeah. has a cool extra thing on top of what the cards do with right. the powers. Right. Yeah, I like that. Now you you have a new game that you showed us here. I have, yeah, I have a few new games um, coming up. I've got a party game coming out called Rolf with DFTBA Games. Haven't seen that one yet. That's a brand new, it's a brand new game company created by Eric Johns of Weird Miniatures Mm -hmm. and uh, Hank Green. Uh, they're creating a new uh, board game company. They just kickstarted Wizard School that did very well. And they're doing a party game online called Rolf. And it's a very simple, but it's a lot of fun where there's just phrases. And the last word in the phrase is blank. Uh, so I could say, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And you hold up the card, and on the other side, it will say, it'll, I'll say Rudolph the Red-Nosed blank. And it'll say Reindeer and have an R on it. You can't say reindeer or you lose, but you've got to say a word that begins with R, right? Uh, so it's funny. So kids would maybe say Rudolph the Red-Nosed Rhinoceros, and they just think, they think that's hilarious or whatever. So it's a lot of cards like that. So depending on your, who you're playing with is how the game is going to go. If you play with adults, obviously you could, it could probably go into the gutter pretty quickly. Um, but if you're playing with kids, they can, they can play it as well. So that's just a really kind of fun party game, a quick word game that you can play that is coming out. I also have um, Operation, uh, not Operation Faust, I have Battle for Souls. I'm doing an expansion for that, uh-huh. uh, that I'm going to kickstart myself, and I'm doing a, a kind of second printing and a deluxe edition of that game. Um, I've got uh, uh, OP Arena, Overpowered That's Arena. That's the one that I played yeah. that I liked a lot. It's crazy. There's a hundred different characters in the game. Everything from Cthulhu to a little girl to a goat to you know a kitty cat, you know, to dragons, and you're just trying to fight each other. It's it's pure Ameritrash, 
where you place your color damage tokens when you do damage and when you kill another character you get points for doing the most damage or for landing the final blow and just the way and every character has two different overpowered abilities but other players can nerf them so if you nerf an ability you no longer have it um, so it's just really fun and crazy and the way the cards interact they kind of chain together and create these wacky combos yeah I really liked it I mean it felt like like I told you it felt the scoring mechanisms the way you're attacking things felt similar to smash up how you're going to areas and trying to collect but you added a whole bunch of different things like the powers of the cards and instead of going to middle areas you're attacking other people right and you're you're collecting points and whoever does the final kill gets points for doing the final blow on a character it's right. very it's a very 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 good game yeah there's some crazy things that like I got like a pirate taco and a karate sausage and just really weird things and it's it, it's it's fun a lot of the fun is just getting your next character to see what it is you know sharks with it's lasers awesome. yeah. they're in there yeah laser sharks are in there everything's in there so we'll have a hundred characters in that one I did my best Austin Powers impression for that, that was pretty one. good man good <laughs> I was like I've got the sharks with those lasers <laughs> so um now I have another game to play. I'm gonna go. I I want to go out and play your word game before we leave this. Yeah, um, we're getting ready to set it up now. It's called Doppelganger with Stephen Avery, and you know if you work with Stephen Avery, it takes four times as long. <laughs> just kidding, <laughs> no, Steve. Just kidding, Steve. No, but, Tom. Tom told me this when they did nothing personal. It was like Tom was like, "Okay, we're ready." And Steve Avery spent four times as long, didn't he? <laughs> to do everything. Steve has got great ideas, and we've been working on this one for a long time. We finally got it to where I believe it's really ready. It's a trader game called Doppelganger. So you're a party of an adventurers, and you're trying to complete quests, and you've got to throw things in to complete the quests. But there's one or two doppelgangers in the party who are trying to fail it. So you're trying to find these three artifacts, and if you find them in time, you win. But if the doppelganger prevents you from doing that, you lose. Or if they kill a party member, you lose. So that's a fun kind of trader mechanic game that goes from four to eight players. So we're playing that here as well. Oh, that sounds great. Well, you know, obviously you have a lot of things that you've already done, a lot of things coming out. So hopefully continued success in the future. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, it's a pleasure having you on here. Yeah, thanks. Again, Robert Burke, and we're here at Prototype Con. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.